All right, we are here with uh, Louise Quinn, who you might know from such things as Sky Sports. Uh, Louise, how was that last week? Yeah, I absolutely loved it. Um, just such an experience I got. You know, there was talks with that could happen a little while ago, and I was like, yeah, I was like, to our uh, communication, I was like, get it done, get it done. Really want to, you know, just experience it and get in the studio. And um, yeah, and it was everything, yeah, that I, that I wanted to be. And it was just put nice and casual and obviously just chatting with even that blues legend as well, Kaz Kearney as well, and she just made it easy. She's a, she's an expert. Yeah, absolutely. Which pundits do you like listening to or watching? It would genuinely be Kaz Kearney. I just think how she's, you know, even on the, the touch screen, the Piero, she's uh, she's just, you know, top class. And I think it's it's what I actually enjoy, <laughs> not what I enjoy most now when I'm watching football, but I love the halftime analysis. I love the pre and post Monday night football. Um, Obviously, yeah, Jamie Carragher, Gary Neville, um, Mika Richards. Like, I just love watching it all, but now I, I do put that extra detail into just, it just kind of listens to them a little bit more just to, you know, to see what they're saying. I won't be as controversial as some of them, but, you know, you also got to say what you got to say and, and, uh, and make it your own. So, yeah, I just really like it. What have you made of the Sky and BBC coverage of the WSL this season? Yeah, I just think they've, they've just taken it on and have, have given it, the full the full run they're still and it's still only especially for sky it's first year um you know it's it's just massive they um and there's going to be just more to come from it as well i think you know and getting in players each week i think is a you know it's a great opportunity for us as the players but then also for people to actually see what we're about as well to, you know just to actually see and hear a personality instead of just seeing the player and um you know and knowing that we're you know we know what we're talking about and it's it's part of our day-to-day -day stuff to actually be analysing games and um, yeah, I just think it's it is it's just a it's a great job and you just love to see the coverage everywhere. It's popping up anywhere I see it. So you know, I hope that's kind of the same for other people. Sure, uh, your own season obviously with, with Birmingham City has been an up and down one. Yourself, though, I saw that uh, they, they tweeted out recently that you played every minute of the WSL so far this season. How important is that uh, throughout your career? That that being robust, being able the best ability being availability and all that, that cliched stuff. How important has that been for you just in terms of confidence down through the years? Um, yeah, I just, I think for me, it's, you know, I, I don't overly think about it, but as long as I'm just being able to make sure that I'm keeping keeping fit, keeping ticking over. Um, and as you say, yeah, just making sure that I'm available no matter what. Um, I think that's important for me. And then and then it's up to coach, up to the coach if if I'm, you know, if I'm needed for that game or not. Um, and you know, and that's that's what's important for me, I think. And yeah, and it's just down to, I suppose, just I, like yeah, the mindset I have, the recovery that I like to go into, and and just making sure I keep yeah keep ticking over, and that they, you know they kind of have no choice but to but to put me on if needs be. Uh, what about then when it comes to consistency of, of partner and maybe even with goalkeeper and fullbacks on top of that? Because it's an interesting question at the moment, just given some of the injury troubles that the Republic of Ireland have in that position. Yeah, and that's you know that's a that's part and parcel of it again, and like that is sport. It's it's something that you have to take on, and um, you know for us, will it's it's obviously just really disappointing. Just just more personally for the girls, you know, to kind of be facing facing those injuries. So like Sav and Di, um, you know, who have just both been doing brilliant either in Irish team and with club, and um, you know for them, we just obviously want them to, to recover as quick as possible. But it is sport. It's something they have to take on. Um, you know, but for us then, it's just making sure that we, like as we said in the last even Pinotar Cup, we were able to do a lot of rotation and people were able to create then, you know, their own um, what's it, like partnerships in other ways. And I think that's just really important. And that's that's how this squad feels. You don't feel like that you have to that you have to restart. Um, you know, I think we really actually know each other extremely well and and love it. And we we all have this you know kind of connection coming in already. So. It's uh, you know it's not something that you overthink and you just you know you carry on and making sure then that people just know their roles. Do you personally prefer playing at uh, in a setup that's two at the back or two centre backs or, or three at the back? Like because it obviously would have been a, a bit of chopping and changing recently. Um, I suppose yeah. Again, I don't mind as long as I'm kind of on the pitch in one way. But I you know I am really enjoying kind of the the three in the back, um, three centre backs. Because yeah, I'm doing it. I'm doing it with both club and country. Um, but you know, it's something that obviously I've played in a in a back four for you know more than half my career as well. So it's um, I do yeah I think I do just like like the role that I have in the in the three or if at, at sometimes it can be a five and 
you know, I actually get to kind of sometimes see the game a little bit more. Um, I think I kind of, free, is it? Yeah, yeah, you kind of just have a bit of a better view of the pitch, and you know, it's it's a lot of around covering players, and I just kind of when something has happened one side, I know exactly, you know, you have to cover across, but you also just you just get to see the whole pitch. Yeah, you, know, you just have maybe those couple of extra seconds to kind of assess and and judge maybe what's going on. So yeah, I, yeah, I am enjoying the the three. I think quite a bit. Right. So when when you're in two as opposed to three, it's just it's kind of more reaction based, is it than than being in a three? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, because you're you know you're you're directly involved, and then again, it's, it depends what another team is playing. If they're starting to play with a high three, um, it's that directly affects then a back four because um, they just get to go in those spaces. Whereas in when you're a three, then You've you've already taken up kind of their half spaces as well, so it's uh, yeah it's something it's it's something adapt. We did actually we played um, even with Blues we played a back four against Chelsea, um, you know just to kind of change it up and it, and it did you know it took we had to get the couple of training sessions just to kind of familiarise yourself with it because it is the spaces that you leave then are very very different and the gaps then that you create for for uh, for centre forwards can be can be very different, but. Yeah, I just think for me personally, I just kind of like that role. It gives me, yeah, just I can get to, I don't know, I get to maybe talk and communicate a bit more, yeah. boss around, see the game a bit more and, bit more and, and uh, yeah, and it's, I think it's, it's, it's actually just kind of defending as well. Re, like, you know, I get to, it's making sure that I'm kind of winning aerial balls, covering in behind players if someone gets past and it's just, yeah, I don't know, just like the role, yeah. Yeah, just being somebody who, who loves defending, I guess, and actually ha having to, to, to be called on to do more of that, which, which might be the case, I guess, next week against Sweden. So I, I presume as somebody who plays at the back, it's just something that you're relishing, just that, that pure, uh, like, um, I guess, I guess opportunity to try and shut Sweden out next week. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think it's something we've become... Again, really, really good at us. We're, you know, in the Irish team, we're not conceding, um, you know, many goals, making it really, really difficult for teams to break us down. Um, and yeah, listen, we know that it's going to be one of those games where Sweden are definitely going to have, you know, more possession, and we've got to, we've got to really keep it tight. No gaps between the lines. Watch the half spaces. But you know, Sweden, Sweden will take what you give them as well. They're obviously a very, very smart team. If you leave a bit of space in behind, if you leave, you know, space in between the lines, they're going to use it. They'll go direct. You know, they'll play short around you. So we've got to really kind of be aware um, of all of all the threats that they have. But of course, then yeah, you know, for me as a defender, putting myself up against some of the best, you know, forwards in in Europe, I, you know, I I do love it and I love the challenge and. Um, you know, and making sure then that I can just do anything possible to, you know, to, to keep a clean sheet at the back for the team. What's been really interesting is that over the course of the last, I guess, dozen internationals, a lot of people have seen like the, the gradual improvements in, in the team. But then you had the Pinatar Cup recently, where I guess we didn't get to see what was actually happening. So, uh, from your perspective, what's what have you got better at over the course of that? How, how have you improved since the last uh, qualification break? Um, I think just kind of. Uh, one thing like adapting to, to kind of different styles as well. Um, you know, you can tweak some formations just slightly, um, depending even if you have one or two pivots um, or sixes in a team. Um, you know, so that would be something then that we've, we've learned and then to quickly adapt it. There was, I think it was maybe the second game um, that we had to kind of quickly change it and go from uh, a two to a one maybe um, in, in that kind of defensive midfield role. Um, you know, and that was something then as soon as as soon as, you know, it was happening and the girls were told it was you could see the change in the game and how it's and how it can just change and adapt. Um, you know, that we're we're taking in what's being said and you know, and it's it's something as well that you get, we're always aware of, yeah, potentially back five, who knows, back four, how many strikers. Um so I just think how people are taking on the game and learning learning the roles um has been huge and then just yeah, and just kind of adapting to the game as it goes on. You know, it's not sometimes you can't you can't go over everything. But again, I just think um, the maturity of players um, that we're getting and the experience of players being away, you know, in in professional setups and leagues, um, you know, it's really coming to show that, you know, it's sometimes you you're not going to be given every detail. But how do you actually adapt and take it on? And and I think that's just been something that's you know everyone has been doing. And it's just the atmosphere. I think we're just really enjoying our football. Um, and that just makes that makes football just far easier than when you're actually just, you know, you you see and you look around and you look at the, you know, your teammates around you and you know that everyone's got their each other's backs. So 
for me, then that just makes it easy as well. Uh, lastly, then, I guess, if you want to take this week and maybe if you rewind to one of the Germany weeks in the last qualification campaign, how does it? how is the, the confidence levels different? Is it around the same, or, or do you feel that when you're going up against one of these top, top nations that, that things do feel different? The expectation is a little bit more in a week like this. Um, yeah, I think it just kind of feels different because... You know, I suppose you go into the games maybe thinking it is one bit where you feel like the expectations are yet yeah, or maybe it's, it goes both way, maybe slightly higher, but also then there isn't as much of an expectation on you. But we've just come into it now knowing, I think personally, just how to handle these situations. Um, you know, of course, you're always going to go into the game with, with nerves and feeling maybe even a bit of personal pressure and then team pressure added on top of that. But I think we've really learned how to adapt to that. Um, and that's massive and I think obviously that was something that maybe hurt us in the last campaign um, just just adapting to the pressure of of bigger games of a situation that we hadn't really you know been in before um, so for us to kind of take that on and to actually go into a, a game versus Sweden knowing that we can really give them a game um, you know only one nil at home um, and we had we had opportunities to you know to to get on the score sheet ourselves and they actually adapted to how we were playing because we were still causing a threat in the last few minutes um, you know so again that's a it's a massive compliment and I think teams are starting to see that and I think we just come in here then with just yeah a, you know a free mind and um, you know know that we're actually very very capable of of getting results or and, you know and making it really difficult for these for these top teams and you know that's what's going to kind of take us forward further and you know and push us push us on into into qualification, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, Louise Quinn, very best of luck next week. Thanks, William, for your time. Thank you.